turn my mic on. We want to thank you um, for venturing out. I know it is a weird time and uh, lots of things going on in the world, but we felt like um, that this was needed. Uh, we pushed it back a week further than some other churches did. Um, we kind of gauged some of the things that they were doing. And um, so far, we've had no reports of, um, uh, from our churches of anybody spreading COVID through the worship service. So that is an awesome, awesome thing. So I want to make just give you all some kind of, I know it sounds crazy, but some, some house rules. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. Um, but one thing we're going to do is when we sing... We're going to sit rather than stand. And the reason is, is because if you're like me, um, one of the guys in my church nicknamed me the Spitting Llama. And he said, never sat on the front two pews while I was preaching or you would get wet. So we figure if you're sitting down, you're not going to project that to somebody else. And so at this point, um, we don't have a choir, but I think next week we have special music. We've already been working on, so we're working on some of that and in our ways of coming back with that. Um, you notice you don't have hymnals, but you will have the words on the screen. Now, having said that, some people say, hey, we really like the music part too. So here's what you can do. Now, this is totally up to you, but David will show you the United Methodist hymnal app that goes on your phone or your iPad that you can purchase and it has all the music and the words. I think it's 24 bucks. It's cheaper than buying a hymnal. So you could talk to David or, the, or we, we may even put that out there somewhere this week where you could see that in order to get that. Um, so a little bit about our offering. Um, we're not going to pass the basket. And so the offering stations are to be left as you exit um, to your two sides. And so... That's kind of house rules. Now, announcements. Um, we've got Sunday schools that have begun to meet back. We're actually bringing confirmation back. We're going to try to get those kids um, confirmed. We had done about six weeks when um, COVID hit, and we still have about six weeks to go. So we will be doing that. And we are meeting in the garden. Um, the youth have been meeting as much as they can outside. Uh, we haven't brought our children's groups back yet, but they've got some plans on doing some stuff for that. If your Sunday school wants to meet, and you're, you're not already meeting, but you want to meet in person, um, and there are ways that you can meet in person, and those that don't want to come, you can still Zoom, which is, are not Zoom. Well, yeah, you can Zoom too. We're Facebook live in today, but you can Zoom those too. Um, and you just need to call Candy. Now, here's the thing. We just ask that you be uh, patient with us, number one, about classrooms. Eventually, we're going to get you back to your classroom. You've invested a lot, put a lot in that. We're going to get you back there. But based on numbers, we may not be able to do that yet because of the distancing. So if you have 80 in a room and the room is an 83-person, 85-person room, we're going to have to put you somewhere else. But we'll figure that out, okay? Um, and so we want you to know that. Having said that, we're also going to be starting our summer women's Bible study, which will meet in here um, because there's plenty of space. So you can see Miss Barber about that. Uh, so there's, there's details on Facebook. But that will start on Wednesday the 24th. So not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. We are also talking about starting our disciple Bible studies and stuff back. And we're going to look at the end of August doing that. So about six or seven more weeks, you'll be getting some more information on how we're going to do that. Because there is a possibility we can even do that in here, the Fellowship Hall or the CLC. One of the things that we've also done to adjust the church is all those places will now have video capabilities, even the Fellowship Hall. We're working on that right now. It's getting ready to get a new sound system so that you'll be able to hear and that so that we can have stuff so everybody can see. So we've been doing a lot of different things um, since y'all been gone. Um, not to mention we got hit by lightning four times in one day. 
And uh, we've had to replace some sound gear and some other stuff. But those are kind of our announcements and kind of where we are. And uh, let's pray. It's so good to be together. God, how awesome is it for your believers to come together? And these are not just believers. These are followers of Jesus Christ. God, to see their faces, even if they've got a mask on, to see their faces, to see their eyes, to see being able to come back together for cooperative worship. God, it seems like so long since we've been together. And it's kind of like today, a family reunion. And God, we know there are some that still, because of their health or because of apprehensions, can't be with us. And so we are so thankful that we can still live stream this, that they are still seeing this, and that we are able to reach people through this. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit dwell among us today. For it says, where two or more are gathered, so there are you. So we know. That in this time in our world, this crazy time, we need you. God, we need you more than we ever have. And so God, show up in these lives in a mighty way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We'll sing all verses.
Amen. Well, now in our worship, we usually stand up and pass the peace to each other, or we've been saying while you've been worshiping online to text or call or Facebook message a friend. Well, we do have you in the sanctuary today, some of you, and you can pass the peace. Here are some ideas for you. If you want to, you can stand and turn to your neighbor. You can wave to them. You can do the old peace sign, or if you're a Star Trek fan, you can do the Vulcan peace sign. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to do just to share the peace of Christ. So let's stand to do that now. Now, near and far, in the sanctuary and at home, let us unite together in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we come to a, a time of our prayer concerns, and um, I will tell you that uh, we have been very, very busy with funerals since um, this whole pandemic and everything else has started, and so we've had several people or several people connected with our church. Um, I think David and I, two weeks ago, had four, um, four funerals in seven days, so um, we have been doing a, a, a lot of that, so continue to pray for those families. They are listed on the prayer things that come out every week. In the very top part are the families of, those are, those are the ones that you have seen that have passed. I got a, um, a, a call yesterday um, that uh, one of the ladies and I don't know that she has been in attendance, and if she has maybe once or twice since David and I got here um, Two years ago now, but um, Fran Wells, they have called in hospice is the, 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 the memo I got. I'm still trying to figure out a little bit more information on that, so um, I will let you know what is going on with that um, here in the next few days. Um, Fred Long will go in for a procedure this week on his back. We want to be in prayer for him. He really wanted to come to worship today and told us he would, um, but didn't want to have a setback in the surgery because right now uh, elective surgery is hard to get and get scheduled for, even though we're seeing some of that come back. Barbara Batson has been struggling um, for the last few weeks, um, but they will not have to do surgery. We found that out, and uh, I talked to her on Friday, and um, she um, will not have to have surgery 
And that is a good thing. And then last Sunday, uh, I found out that a friend of mine, he was actually my roommate my um, freshman year in college. We had actually played ball against one another in Little League at, uh, up in Kentucky. He went to Eastern, I went to Mayo. And then we both wound up at Campbellsville University together. But um, his name was Skeeter. Um, his real name was Gilbert. And he said, nobody goes by Gilbert, so call me Skeeter. And, uh, but Skeeter was on his way out last week and had a heart attack and died in his driveway. And so uh, he was a, a teammate of mine. And I was actually going to go home to Louisville this week um, to see uh, or to be a part of the funeral. Um, and they did a family only because of the COVID. And so we want to send our, our prayers to his family as he leaves behind some kids. And um, just being 51 years old, uh, that's young. Um, so I want to pray for him. We know there are several other prayer concerns. We know what's going on in the world. And somebody asked me the other day what we can do. And what we can do is what we can do. We can be an instrument of peace. We can be an instrument of love, and we can be an instrument of prayer. And uh, I know there's a lot of unease, there's a lot of unrest, there's a lot of people that are in harm's way in all different kinds of things. And, um, you know, somebody asked me, what's the answer? And really, there isn't an answer. It's just a time that we really need prayer, and we need to really, really, really hit our knees and pray hard for our country, for people that are struggling, just for the whole um, unease that has taken place and continues to take place. And um, be an instrument of peace. That's just, this is all I can really say. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, and we talk to my staff, um, think before you say whether it's going to divide or whether it's going to unite. That's kind of been our, 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 our slogan here. Does it bring people together? Does it push people apart? You know, Jesus came... And he drew people together. And, and if we're going to be like Jesus, that's what we need to do. So I um, want to go um, to the Lord in a word of prayer. But before I do that, I want you all to recognize um, our people that have been here every week. And especially our people back there. And give them a hand for all that they have done. Um, Joey and Laura and, and Melissa and... Uh, uh, and Jeff, and I, well, I was going to bring up Jeff, and many of y'all know that um, uh, in the gender reveal was yesterday, right? You're going to be a grandfather of a little girl. So um, this was a blessing. I told, um, I told them the other day that that is the brightest spot of my 2020 so far, is <laughs> finding out they were pregnant and going to have a child. So uh, we're always trying to look for that little nugget of hope, aren't we? So anyway, thank you guys so much. And thank our ushers and our greeters. And another person who has worked so diligently hard, and she's a worry wart too, which helps in all this, is Candy. Candy has done some amazing, amazing things. And I, and I know she's not here. Um, and then I, I can't say enough about Amy and Beth. Um, and Beth is actually helping a little bit on this side now. Um, when we brought the day school back, what a mess. And so thank you and thank Amy for doing that. And in the midst of this, Amy bought a house and is moving. And Gary, thank you for your help. And I know I've missed somebody. Um, but I just feel like we needed to do that. And thank you guys so much because um, you have brought the good news of Jesus Christ in the midst of this to a lot of households, to a lot of people. And thank you for that. Thank you for taking care of our kids and, and all that you do. And uh, Spencer, thank you too for getting together with the youth. So everybody here has found themselves in some unique roles. And, and we appreciate that. Let's pray. God, we come to you now so thankful for this time that we could come together. God, you hear our prayer concerns. We pray for Fran and Fred and Barbara, the family of Skeeter. God, we pray for the unease in our world. God, we do pray for the social injustice that has taken place for so many years. And God, we pray for those that have been affected by COVID. God, we pray for the fear 
that grips our world right now. It's not just the United States. That is worldwide. And God, it is so good to be back in worship. It's like Christmas today. God, being able to meet together. Being able to feel the presence of your Holy Spirit. Being able to be in your house. In your place of worship. Being able to worship together. Worship that risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, thank you for that. And now we pray with the confidence you taught your disciples to pray, saying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. Guide us, O oh God, by your word. Give us lot to our souls and pour out your Holy Spirit so that we may have wisdom and understanding and that our hearts might be opened to you today. Amen. Now reading from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. together for good, good. 
Now during this time we invite you to give and there's a few different ways you can give. Some of you have already given as you came in the doors, dropping off your gifts and the offering plates. You can give if you haven't on your way out or you can mail a check or you can give online or set up charitable giving through your work. And you'll notice we're still going to have the um, kind of the ritualistic moment where the ushers still raise the offering plates to God as we just kind of symbolize that is a part of our worship in a way that we continue to live out our faith in the midst of worship. Well, first and foremost, I cannot tell you how good it is to be able to preach to people and not to empty pews. Even though one week we did bring all of Ever's stuffed animals and we put them on that pew right there. Really, to be honest with you, we've done some very interesting things that you don't see on camera. But we have heard that sometimes we go on early and we're talking and people have picked up and trying to figure out, what are they talking about? Um, but it's been very interesting times. And uh, so David and I, of course, before the pandemic hit, we had pretty much almost eight months of sermon topics and stuff that we were going to do. And of course, the pandemic hit and we went, oh, we're going to change some of that. And so we started this uh, sermon series uh, called uh, Anxious for Nothing. Um, it's, it's, it's a book. Um, if you want to read the book, is how we got the premise, even though we're not really following. Well, I'm not following 100% along with the book. But it's a Max Licato book that came out. And then we noticed that several other um, pastors had taken this same um, sermon and series and they had uh, put it together. And so today what we want to talk about is the perspective of praise. How in the world do we find praise in the midst of everything that's going on? Have you found yourself asking the question, where do I find joy? Where, where, do, where can I see it? And, and the first thing that I've got to tell you is that you've got to look for it. You've got to, you've got to look outside 
of your negative Nancy or negative Ned box. You've got to look outside of that. That was something we'd always say. We had this guy that worked at the children's home and we'd always say, man, you're always a negative Nancy. Everything you see is half empty. And, and sometimes people are just geared that way. But what we're finding now is that more people are finding themselves that way. And, and we've got to be very careful of that. And we've got a great example in the scripture of someone who, who lived a very hard life for Jesus Christ. And that's Paul. And yet he found praise in the midst of being in prison. He found praise in the midst of being beaten. He found praise in the midst of being shackled. He found praise in the middle of being shipwrecked. I mean, this dude was even bitten by a snake. And he found praise. And so how do we find that praise? And here's the first way. I want to say something to you today. And I hope this will resonate with you. And I hope not only will it resonate you. I hope this is one of those you put into your spiritual toolbox. You realize we all have this toolbox. This spiritual toolbox that we put stuff into. But here's what I want to say. What you have in Christ is better than anything you don't have in life. What you have in Christ is better than anything that you don't have in life. Isn't it amazing how we always want more? How we always want different and yet none of that ever makes us happy? Like it might be short-lived, short-term. But the truth is, what we have in Christ is greater than anything that we don't own or that we don't have. And if we'll keep that in perspective, we'll be able to put a positive where there is negative rather than what we're doing right now. And that is putting a negative where there needs to be a positive. So the story's told of a pastor who wanted to show his little girl um, how to um, uh, jump start a car. I thought it was really funny because I have been known to carry jumper cables in my car and, and, and to help people, you know, if I've ever seen somebody. Well, for a few years while Savannah was playing travel softball to save on gas, I thought it'd be a good idea to get a Prius, which Jack hated and Lily loved. So um, there's my kids. But you don't know this, but you cannot jump out another car with a Prius. Because it can arc the battery and cause the whole system to go bad. Because, you know, it runs on a big battery. So there's this pastor who wants to show his daughter how, how, to, how to jump start a car. And because they left the lights, the dome light. This ever happened to anybody? The kids left the dome light on. The lady goes out the next day to start the car and... It won't start. So the pastor's like, we got this. And he pulls his truck up and he shows his daughter. He hooks everything up and and he says, now I'm going to get in this car and I'm going to give it some juice. And you tell me, um, you know, you try to start the other one and you tell me when it starts. And so he gets on and gives it some juice. And all of a sudden he hears, daddy, 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 what's going on? There's smoke everywhere. What is what is going on? And he gets out of the car and he looks And and when he gets to the car, the jumper cables have actually melted in half. Now, you know what happened, right? He put the positive where the negative was supposed to be. And the negative where the positive was supposed to be. That's called polarizing opposites. And basically what happens with that is the reversal of the polarity can cause a buildup of hydrogen gas within the battery and can ignite it or explode. See, I never knew this, but when you jump a car, if you get them reversed, you have really created what could be a bomb to go off. 
Now that's true of charging a battery, but that's also true in our life. See, the reversal of polarity, like I said, in our life can cause permanent damage to our relationships and to people that are around us. Really bad things can happen when you put a negative where there is supposed to be a positive. Now, I'm not saying that we need to go into this karma or I'm sending you good vibes. As a matter of fact, that is a pet peeve of mine. I hate when people say, I'm sending you good vibes your way. I just simply tell people, I'm not sending you vibes. I'm praying for you, right? That's the difference. I'm not sending you any vibes. You can get them on your own, but I'm praying for you, right? And so I think we're not saying that we need to replace, you know, God with just good vibes. But the truth is, is that all this kind of works together. On the flip side of this, when we pray and we have this reliance on God, we can get out of our stuck, bad mood. Have you ever known someone who claimed to be a follower of Jesus Christ, but it seemed like they were always a naysayer and they were always in a bad mood? You ever met that person? I've met pastors like that. And I'm like, you got to find some joy. You keep putting a negative where the positive's supposed to be. And you're expecting a different result, and it's not going to happen. So I want to teach you the shortest verse in the Bible today. Anybody know what that is? Raise your hand if you know what it is. Say it out loud. Okay. Right answer, but wrong answer. In English, yes. That is the shortest verse in English. Jesus wept. But the scripture wasn't written in English. It was written in Greek. And where Jesus wept has 18 characters minus the vowels. There's another verse in the Bible that only has 16 in Greek and is exactly the opposite. You know what it is? Here it is. Rejoice always. The exact opposite of Jesus wept. Polarizing opposite in the scripture. Because it only has 16 characters in Greek. Two less than Jesus wept. Now you can go ahead and still tell people Jesus wept. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, think about the opposite there. Think about the difference there. Think about what I'm telling you, that we need to go from the weeping part to this part where it says, rejoice always. Rejoice always. Here's the scripture that goes into a little bit more of that. That one is actually... Um, this one is actually found in 1 Thessalonians. Listen to this. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. See, what happens in our life, and I think what Satan is using the times and the news and Facebook for right now is to put nothing but negativity into your life. Now, here's what negativity wants to do. Negativity wants to come into your house and sit down with you and eat. And then it wants to get up from the table and it wants to go to bed with you. And then it wants to get up with you the next morning. And then it wants to spend the whole day with you. Now, here's the problem. The problem is we think that sometimes Satan has like this one little trap or this one bait and he's out to get us and that's it. No. See, Satan has nothing to lose because he has nothing to gain. He doesn't win in the end. And so the truth is, if he can lead you into a place of negativity, 
If he can get you to take the positive and put it where the, or, or the, yeah, the negative and put it where the positive is supposed to be, he can wreck your whole life. And here's what the scripture says. Rejoice always, even in the middle of it. And some of us say, you know what, Steve? I've tried to do that. Man, I've tried to be positive. Man, I've tried to pray. Man, I've tried to get over this issue. Or I've tried to get over that issue. Or I'm tired of everybody in this camp saying this. And everybody over here saying this. And I'm confused. And we're at this place in our world, in our life, where I promise we just feel negative and drained. Y'all know in the Chronicles of Nardi. Narnia, there's a, of course, it's a C.S. Lewis book, but there's a guy in there named Puddlegum. Anybody ever heard of Puddlegum? Puddlegum is this, this negative guy. It's always negative. Now, here's what was interesting that I found out this week. Billy Graham, probably known as the greatest preacher ever. Let's just go ahead and say it. I mean, we can debate whether it's, you know, Kobe... LeBron or Michael in basketball, but there's no debate in preachers. Like, he's the best. Like, Billy Graham, hands down. But you know what his family said about him? They said at home he was a puddle gum. Seriously. They said he always looked at the glass as half empty till he stepped into the pulpit. And I thought, how amazing is that? Because, like, I've got this guy and Mother Teresa, like, they walk on water in heaven, right? Now, I'm not saying that to discredit him or to make it look any different. What I'm saying is that if he struggled, we know we're going to struggle. And as a matter of fact, did people not struggle all throughout the Scripture to put this negative where there was supposed to be a positive? I think of Elijah, and here's Elijah. This is one bad dude, right? Elijah, like, single-handedly killed 450 of the meanest, nastiest people ever. Like, he just, gone. And then this lady comes out at him and goes, Hey, I'm going to take your life tomorrow. And he runs. And not only does he run... He begins to doubt the God who gave him the power in the midst of a drought to have fire. And then I think of Jonah. Now Jonah gets a bad rap, right? I mean, Jonah has to go to Nineveh. Have you ever thought about Nineveh? Here, let me tell you a little bit about Nineveh. In Nineveh, they were so evil that they would pile up skulls of their victim outside their homes as decorations. In Nineveh, they would remove the lips and the noses of their victims and wear them around their neck. In Nineveh, they would cut their enemies' eyelids off So that they would have to look into the sun and it would blind them from frying their eyes. That's Nineveh. You want to go there? So after Jonah has this encounter with the early day sea world, what happens? He goes and Nineveh repents. You know what it says? I love this scripture. Not only did Nineveh repent, but their dogs and their cats were getting saved. That's what scripture says. My dog needs saved. That's how it was. And what did he do? He went and got under this little broom bush and said, woe is me. Because he put a negative where the positive is supposed to be. And see, in your life right now, you've got a decision to make. What are we going to do with everything that we're receiving right now? 
And this is my hope and this is my prayer. And this has been it since this all started. And I'm going to be honest with you. I've had some negative Nancy moods. Or negative Ned or whatever you want to call it. I looked at the little two-year-old the other day and I said, Ever, I'm so sorry the world has to be this way. I don't know what it's going to look like 15 or 16 years, baby girl. And there are times where I've been so negative in this, and yet what we've got to learn to do is we've got to put a positive where the negative is and quit putting the negative where the positive is supposed to be. And therefore, we can change who we are and how we come about with things. I love this verse. And I'm going to end right here because I was supposed to end a few minutes ago because we were supposed to be out 45 minutes and I broke the rule. But that's usually what I do anyway, just to ask Laura. Um, so, if you remember what the scripture says. That the Lord prepares a table for you. Now here's what's so funny about that. A lot of times when you read that, you end right there. But you know what the second half of that verse says? In the presence of what? My enemies. Prepares a table for me in the midst of my enemies. In other words, we can be positive in a negative world. And I want to end with the greatest example. Jesus is hanging on the cross. He's been beaten. He's been scourged. He's had a crown of thorns pushed over his head. He's been spat upon. He's sweating. He cannot breathe. And he looks down. And he puts a positive. He says, Father, you ready? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. Father, I forgive them. That is taking and putting a positive spin. On the worst circumstance ever. My prayer is. That we won't put a negative where the positive is supposed to be. And burn down the battery. But that we'll stay positive. Even in the midst. Of trying times. Let's pray. God we thank you so much for who you are. God, we live in a polarized society. And somehow we have to be that instrument of peace. God, you know what the cross did? The cross created the bridge between the two cliffs so that we could walk from one side to the other. God, the world is filled right now with a lot of hate. Land a lot of animosity and a lot of negativity. But God, I promise we can be positive. And God, we don't need to put the negative where the positive goes. We need to push out the negative and be positive. God, that's my prayer for us as a society, for us as a church, and for us. As a body of believers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of dedication this morning is, O oh God, our help in ages past.
third concern I forgot earlier, and that's what I love about people being able to uh, communicate with us while we're on Facebook Live, is uh, Maureen Smith will be having some foot surgery this week. She found out this week. We want to be in prayer for her. She's had a lot going on in her life and just want to make sure we lift her up in prayer. She's going to be having that at Grandview. The other thing that we want to announce that if you'll just stay seated as we go, we're going to have the ushers kind of lead us out. This side's kind of going to go this way. This side's going to go that way. We're going to try to keep our social distance from one another. And then when y'all get outside... Um, that's on you, not me. <laughs> Try to still be safe. It's funny because I'll go do a funeral and everybody's together and they're all talking and they're all loving on each other and hugging. I get up to preach and they go six foot apart with mask on. I don't get it, but it's just the way it is. We are human beings who want to be with each other, but practice that safe distancing. Receive the benediction. God, help us to be positive in such a negative world. God, in order to be anxious for nothing, we have to be positive. God, so often we're anxious for everything because we have this negative undertow. And God, the world right now is driving that. But let us put that aside. Let us look for the sunrise. Let us look for the blessings that are being given to us each and every day. And God, most of all, let us be thankful that we have Jesus Christ, a Lord and Savior, who came and gave His life is a ransom, even saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.